Ladies and gentlemen, we have got a, a beautiful news roundup today, just because I feel like the topics are super interesting, because we're going to start off with some Joker 2, freely do set photos. Then we're going to talk about the Penguin series, and, and that is because, guys, Salvatore Moroni has been cast, and, and you're going to find out just why that is a big deal if you didn't know already then we're going to touch on some other little tidbit updates such as constantine 2 with keanu reeves so let's get on with this actually before we do though guys i'd really appreciate it if you considered hitting that like button it, it just it just helps out a lot helps spread these videos out there maybe consider subscribing i know i lecture you guys about this but on my analytics it shows me over 60 plus percent of you come back to the channel every week every almost every video and you actually haven't hit the subscribe button maybe today is the day and so the land of joker 2 or joker meaning a shared madness slash a madness for two the, the translation gets looser and looser the more you look into it but yeah more or less adapting mad love now we've been covering this on the channel for quite some time i've done a breakdown which i do recommend checking out on the first official image we got teased from todd phillips with joaquin phoenix's arthur there we have lady gaga's harleen quinzel and ever since then we've been waiting for stuff like this out there on the interwebs we have had some set photos of joaquin phoenix running away in arthur fleck mode now obviously i'm not going to pretend to know exactly what is going on here why because I'd, I'd be full of BS. I, I don't know exactly what is going on here. So when it always comes to set photos breakdowns, if you will, like this, all I can tell you is is what speculative thoughts are flowing through my little folie de mind. So first and foremost, I'm just going to capture these from Twitter. They're just like going everywhere all over the place. Joaquin Phoenix updates is a good place to check them out. So he can blatantly tell Arthur Fleck is in a little bit, just a little bit of blurred, smudged Joker makeup on his face. That's that's one thing we can deduce because there's actually quite a bit to talk about here. We have him in a grayish suit with a mustardy-esque shirt with a tie on it. But the most interesting thing about it, I find, with what Arthur is wearing here as he's running away, and we'll get to what is possibly causing this running away scene, is that it's very dusty. It's, it's like he's landed in a bunch of flour and he's just, you know, got out of it. Or if he's been lying down on a construction site where they've just been doing work and he's got a load of literally white coated dust all around him. But as these photos progress into even other photos and video the story gets a bit more interesting and that's because you see two other people there now these are stunt doubles if you will obviously in this other photo where you can see arthur or should i say joaquin phoenix having taken his blazer off so you can see the under kind of coppery mustardy looking shirt you can see that there's an actual stunt double there with the full joker arthur fleck joker look and that consists of the red suit the full fully fledged clown makeup but there is a third person that is seen in some of these videos captured by people watching this go down in where arthur is essentially as i'm looking at, on, at it on my screen right now so he's in the middle of a road he gets out and he's, he's kind of dazzled right so he starts running he obviously has the feeling to run somebody opens their car door it looks like a cab and he's like oh well crap gotta go around that but that's when behind him there's that third figure we haven't spoken about wearing the joker clown mask and that joker clown mask should look very familiar because as more and more joker stuff unfolded in the first movie obviously the the clown revolution send in the clowns all of that stuff started kicking off after sort of people wearing the actual joker masks out there that's actually how he helped blend himself in when those two cops were chasing him down the stairs a lot of people on the train on the subway were actually wearing that clown mask now here in the middle as arthur himself is running at the front you see the person in the jacket wearing the clown mask in the middle and then you actually see the fully fledged joker you know red suit full-on clown makeup pursuing them in last place now i've got a little bit of a theory which again i can't be certain of as to what is going down here that i'll get to in a second but let's revisit that second guy in the running scene so arthur himself is at the front that is actually joaquin phoenix now the second person reminds me of the attire that arthur wore 
in the first movie. When he wasn't like fully fledged Joker, you know, he kind of went round in that kind of creamy, coppery, excuse my color description, I am colorblind, so I'm trying to make the best of this. You know, yes, I can see that's a red Joker suit. It, it doesn't work like that, but trust me, if any of you actually are colorblind, you know what I mean. The center one reminds me of this version of Arthur that you're seeing on screen. That's the best way for me to describe it, right? However, however, I have noticed a little bit of a discrepancy here between what I kind of am going for here in my theory that I'm going to unveil in a second in that of the design of the person who's running in the middle of the pursuit. So I thought that this could be a situation. Let's open up the theory first of all to kind of clue you in on exactly what I'm talking about. I do believe, yes, we know that it's Joaquin Phoenix at the front of the line running away. He's like, what's going on? Oh, God, a cab door just opened. Got to get around that. Now there's a clown mask guy chasing me. And now there's actually a Joker version of me chasing me. I thought that rather than this being a theory that I've heard some people say of Joker sympathizers are trying to go after Arthur, or maybe they've helped him escape and they're pursuing him in this moment to be like, oh, it's you. It's you or whatever. I mean, I dig that idea. I do. But for me, especially with this movie and how the first movie incorporated the whole idea of the unreliable narrator and the second movie is fully a dura shared madness. God knows what we're going to get into there. This truly might just be in Arthur's mind and you could look at it like he's symbolically running away from two different versions of himself possibly. Now where this might undo that theory of mine is going back to the design of the second man running with the clown mask on. It does look like Arthur as I've shown on screen but this guy is just wearing a very similar colored jacket if you will but it has a collar there. Now, Arthur in the first movie was more of a hoodie. You may remember certain shots of when that hoodie was actually pulled up when he was walking in the rain and there were some really creepy shots like that. So this isn't an exact match for the clothing that Arthur wore in Arthur Fleck mode. It's actually something he wore quite often in the movie. So can I really say that this is three different versions of Arthur? I don't know if I can. But even with me pointing out how the second guy in the clown mask who could be another version version of Arthur isn't wearing the same coat, if you will, as what we saw in the first movie, I still can't help but see how the two people chasing him could still be seen as variations of Joker, right? You know, sometimes I remember it one way, sometimes I remember it another. Who knows what is really going on here? But if you wanted to look at it in my most simple, straightforward theory, Arthur is running away in a suit that is very tattered, dusty, like insanely dusty. It's like, again, he's been rolling all around the dust in the construction site. He's running through the literal middle of the road. This is still very 1980s Joker Gotham. There's newsstands with uh, papers of Michael Jackson and other things. It's all very around 1983, so it's still following the timeline, if you will, of the first movie. It's not like whenever this scene is taking place, it's taken 10 years in the future. It's still a very short time after the events of the first movie. But it does make you wonder, ultimately, if this is Arthur in the front, Joaquin, that is actually Joaquin running, and he's being pursued by, obviously, the third person, actually Joker. Actually, it's not actually Joaquin in that red suit. It is a stunt double. But I doubt that's a Joker sympathizer. The guy in the middle could be symbolic of Arthur in his kind of Arthur mode. And he's just kind of trying to escape, you know, whatever mentality is going on with him in that moment. Like, this could be anything. This is why I prefaced it by saying... I obviously am not going to pretend to know exactly what this is. This could even be B-roll for a musical number, like a delirious moment in where Arthur's dreaming and he's just wanting to imagine what it's like being out there in Gotham or maybe he feels like he's running away from something in a nightmare and then he's like seeing two different versions of himself come from behind him and pursue him throughout the roads. He feels like he's always running away from these other two parts of himself that make up who he is. Again, despite me saying all of that, that could be total BS. I don't know. This could actually be him in another theory having escaped Arkham and this is when they're shooting outside and he is actually out there maybe he killed someone that's maybe how he got this suit and why it's so tattered and dusty perhaps in the struggle that's a plausible theory as well but if he did murder someone and escaped who are these other two guys now people saying that it's two joker sympathizers who helped him escape i just i don't know about that like they would have had to have got down exactly how arthur looked i suppose that is plausible because he was on that talk show with Murray franklin so they could some guy could have got the red joker suit and worn the makeup but what about the middle guy of the clown mask? Is that a deliberate design choice to make him look like the Arthur in the first movie? Even though it isn't the exact same jacket that is matching, it does seem a bit too deliberately choice to look like Arthur in the first movie with his little creamy, coppery 
jacket and coat that he wore around in between the scenes of his delve into madness. And again on Twitter, this video is from Chef Esteban here, and you can see another angle of it. You see Arthur running in front, the, cu the cab door opens, he goes around the car. Then you see, if I pause it here, you see the clown kind of version of Arthur. Again, I do want to stress that these actually might not be the whole theory of two other Arthurs chasing him, that these could actually be two other guys, but I don't know. It does seem like those are just stunt doubles and they're meant to mimic Arthur in the movie with the real Arthur slash actor Joaquin in front. And you can see the clown mask there. Now, what's interesting, as I said, the, the police car comes and then they fake, you know, a stunt double, you know, pretends to get hit as per in the other angle a bit earlier than when the car actually, you know, slides around. But that's a part of the stunt filming. The camera will make it look like he basically got clipped by the car. And, and another interesting factor is the Joker in last place, who's actually in the full clown makeup, red suit, almost stops to kind of check if that other Joker, if you will, or at least the guy in the clown mask is okay before he continues running after the actual Arthur, the actual Joaquin Phoenix. So if this was all like two other Arthurs in his mind chasing him, would one of them really check on the other delusional uh, manifestation of himself? I don't know. So all in all, it is really hard to decipher what is going on here. Let's consider one more thing. If this is reality, well, that is really interesting as well, because then we can go back to the whole theory of, okay, Joker actually might have escaped. He might have put on this suit, obviously, over inmate clothing or got rid of his inmate clothing and just put this on. I am dying to know how it got so dirty, though. Ultimately, guys, the thing is with these images, no matter how sure you might feel or maybe how strongly you agree with one of my theories or disagree with all of them, none of us know. With Joker, the first movie, having such unreliable narration, Truly, we don't know if any scene, I mean, sure we can deduce that some of them are real, but honestly, that one of the brilliant things about that first movie is any scene you pick could honestly be Arthur in Arkham at the end telling that psychiatrist that he went on to kill how it went down. Even the ending scene being the perfect example in when he's going like this with his bloody lips and there's all of those people in a Joker right surrounding him, like loads of people, that could all be fake because the Joker loves to be adored. He loves this adoration and Arthur, something similar could have happened. He could have got hit by the police car, dragged back to Arkham, but you see my point. When we see that final scene where Arthur finally feels noticed, he is someone and all of those people around him, that could be greatly exaggerated or might not have happened at all. So when we look at this, this could honestly, as I said, it could be B-roll entering a musical number. Arthur's like running down the street. There's two other people who kind of look like him at different points in his delve into madness. And then it like opens up into something else in that of like a musical number within Arkham. Now, I'm not saying that they won't break out of Arkham, by the way. This could actually be him out of Arkham after Harleen's maybe helped him break out, maybe brought him some clothes. I don't know. I do imagine that if his suit is this dirty, going from Arkham Asylum to the streets of Gotham or Arkham State Hospital, rather, you, you might, in your frantic escape, look this muddied and dusted up. But again, we don't know. It could be literally anything. But one thing that I am most excited for is that this movie is coming, believe it or not. I know a lot of people are like, oh, we don't need a Joker sequel. Oh, it never needed to happen. Oh, on top of that, on top of us not even needing this sequel, it's a musical? I don't know. I think a lot of people who are having those thoughts, I can't speak for everyone, and this might not happen to you if you feel this way, but you might, when you see the trailer, and I don't know this for sure, this is just my optimistic gut feeling, you might be like, oh, damn. This actually looks pretty cool. <laughs> you know, when you actually see the clips cut together. So let me know your thoughts on this, guys. Uh, I will be keeping an eye on this in uh, the weeks and months to come. Obviously, this is deja vu for me. I remember doing set photos breakdowns for uh, the first Joker movie. That was a fun time and bang, here we are. But let's move on to story number two, guys. And I know I spent a while. That could have been a video in of itself and uploaded separately. But the Penguin series, turns out that now we actually have the Penguin series at HBO Max, according to Variety here and a bunch of other reports, this is it's definitely true, casts Clancy Brown. Now guess what? It says here that Brown will appear as Salvatore Moroni, a notorious Gotham City crime boss, the character that was referenced repeatedly in The Batman, as his arrest by the corrupt Gotham officials and the collapse of his criminal empire allowed for Carmine Falcone's organization to rise. And that couldn't be more true. Literally, if you guys remember, before Carmine Falcone, the very thing that facilitated 
Carmine Falcone to be. Oh, he's been the mayor for the past 20 years. Like, literally ruling Gotham for the past 20 years. More or less right around the time of Bruce's parents, is the Waynes' death, basically. Carmine shut up right to the top of owning all the top pillars in Gotham, the mayor, commissioner, district attorney, you name it, police commissioner. And that is because Moroni, the Moroni crime family organization, Salvatore Moroni himself was ruling Gotham the way Falcone did in the Batman movie in the past 20 years before that. But the rat, Carmine, literally ratted out his competition, which landed Salvatore Moroni and his drops organization in prison, and that to be the biggest drug bust in Gotham history, even though, ironically enough, all those officials who got in on that career-making case kept the drops going for the next 20 years, and Carmine had that over them, uh, so he had them all in his pocket. But long story short, Carmine is dead now. Moroni has been serving 20 years of prison time in Blackgate. So, it's possible he could get out in this series, it's possible. And it's also possible that another casting, Shorea Adashlu, could very well be Moroni's wife. I think that'd be fantastic. In of itself, I'm very buzzed that she's cast in this series. She's, she's incredible. But Salvatore Moroni, and, and by the way, this casting, I can't believe I haven't even talked about it yet. I love the idea of Clancy Brown being uh, Salvatore Moroni, having served 20 years in Blackgate, I feel like he's going to really pull off the role very, very well. But my other theory is if he doesn't get out of Blackgate, and the reason why he might be able to is because, again, all of that evidence that was used at the time was handled by uh, corrupt you know, officials, so it might be inadmissible. Plus, he's already served 20 years, so he could come back into the show. Well, he could also operate from behind the bars at Blackgate, as I keep saying, in a very similar way to Netflix's Daredevil had Wilson Fisk still be very, very powerful from behind bars and run things from behind the scenes. Either way, though, fantastic that we're getting Clancy Brown in a recurring role. So that doesn't mean every single episode, but you know, considering it's Moroni, the guy who ran things, he can't not have a big role, even if it's from behind bars. He could still manipulate the situation I've said because th there is a power vacuum. So even if he is behind bars, he's going to do everything he can. Maybe if he's not out of prison, he meets with Shorea Dashlu, who's potentially playing Moroni's wife. And he is saying, right, now is our opportunity. I may still be behind here, but here's what you need to do and our Moroni crime family organization to get back into the number one seat of power like we were 20 years ago. Do this, do this. Our Sophia Falcone, Alberto Falcone, the children of Falcone won't be an issue if you do this, this, and this. But obviously, it's a whole big gang war mess. I cannot wait. Let me know what you think of this casting. I've seen Clancy Brown in quite a few things, and I think it's very appropriate. Very kind of appropriate as well for how old John Turturro was and it just, it just fits. You can imagine Carmine Falcone, John Turturro, and Clancy Brown 20 years before this. That's something to really picture in your head, being like the proper young kind of thug mob bosses of Gotham. But now, you know, 20 years has passed and we've got the Batman movie and Falcone's dead. And this guy's still going. And he's been seething behind bars, knowing he was once at the top 20 years ago. But that rat, Carmine Falcone, stole that from him, but now he's dead and he's got the opportunity to strike back. Keanu Reeves did a Reddit AMA saying, Hi, I'm Keanu Reeves. Ask me anything. And lo and behold, uh, a lot of people in the DC side of things, because we cover a lot of DC here, asked him about Constantine 2. And we had uh, a, a Redditor saying, Have you spoken with James Gunn at all in regards to Constantine 2? Hope we get to see it. And he replied, yes. And me too, as in me too, I hope we get to see it. But first and foremost, he has, yes, spoken to James Gunn. Now, this has all been a quite a bit of a thing, I would say, over the past few months, because not only were there false reports, and I remember people telling me this, saying, oh, no, no, Boba, Constantine 2 has been scrapped. And then later on that very day, it, it was reversed. And it's like, no, apparently it is still going on. And not only that, if you want to scale back time a little bit further, we had Constantine 2 put into, you know, pre-development, if you will, by Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi, before James Gunn and Peter Safran, I believe, came in November into their new DC leadership. Now, that may sound familiar to you because Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi were essentially holding that position of the DC leadership while David Zaslav found his new leaders, and that is James Gunn and Peter Safran, and they did something that, you know, stirred the pot a little bit with fans, and that is while we were having new leaders coming in, they got Henry Cavill to be Black Adam, or they, they approved it, and, uh, you know, he announced his return, all of that, and then New Vision came in, 
and they didn't want that. So was there going to be a similar situation? Here is what I'm trying to ultimately get to in how Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi said, yeah, Keanu, yeah, you can have a Constantine too. And now the new leadership's come in and there's James Gunn been like, actually, that doesn't really fit into our vision, right? Doesn't fit into our vision of the DCU. Now, as far as I'm aware, up until present day, we haven't heard anything outright denying that. And, and Keanu's saying here, Yes, I have spoken to James Gunn, and me too, I hope we get to see it, is a bit of like a middle ground answer. He's acknowledging that he's spoken to James Gunn. It's like, right, okay, maybe they're working out a way this can work. And he's hoping, like me too, hope we can get to see it. That kind of tells me, well, he doesn't really know if it's on the tracks and it's actually going to its next station. Maybe I'm reading too much into that there, but the reason why I say that is a possibility still. And that, yes, he's spoken to James Gunn and maybe it's, they're just trying to figure it out, but maybe it might fizzle out eventually. Is because the DCU, mainly they want everything in a mainstream universe. And what they said is for an Elseworlds story, which they will be coming in the future, we've got the Batman Part 2, Joker 2, as we've gone over in this video, maybe the Tana Hesse Coates Black Superman movie. He said there's going to have to be a high bar. Uh, and what he means specifically by a high bar for projects to be made under the Elseworlds banner is it's not like it has to be better than everything we're doing in the DCU. That would be contradictory to his own ambition for the DCU. It's that for it to justify being made and being outside the main DCU continuity, it has to be a story we really believe in and is worth telling to be a part of a separate universe. And I think most people can understand, like, oh, the first Joker movie made over a billion. It was like this unique identity. It was like a cool story that doesn't fit in with the main DCU. That's fine. Same with the Batman. But does Keanu Reeves' Constantine 2 justify getting made as an Elseworlds movie? I believe it can be, uh, but I feel like having now seen this, Keanu says he has spoken to James Gunn and hope we get to see it, and me too. You know, that makes me feel like I'm wondering if they're writing the script and if they could come up with a story that's justified enough, and they are very much so in the early stages of that, as I believe the writer has talked about as well. If it is worth getting made, as James Gunn said, if it meets that high bar, then maybe I think they'll go through with it. But right now, I wouldn't say it's in a, in a place of limbo because I believe they are 100% working on the concept of story and everything like that for the second one. But then and only then will they evaluate if it's moving truly moving forward or not but yeah just a little bit of an update there but let me ultimately know your thoughts on that and everything in today's news roundup video what you can do here to help me quite a lot is just for simply leaving a like maybe leave a comment share this on social media all things like that circulate this and get it recommended to other people watching on youtube and again if you have got this far especially if you've got this far, consider hitting that subscribe button, the bell notification button as well. Hit it to all rather than personalized. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you people of the DCU in the next video. Goodbye.